character that know each other is always nice to have. We have Kanadi and Falco, Hasumi and Koren, and also the trio of Yuke, Sarita, and Edelgard. So more character like that in the future would be nice. Someone like Goldfeld from Nina Lana's story, or maybe Edelgard husband one day. Behold the new and improved Kanadi. Now almost every single one of Kanadi move is now a shield shake move. There's a 3 hit shield shake that inflict attack down, there's a 3 hit shield shake that inflict defense down, there's also one that inflict uh, dagger with resistance down. Slot in the one that you need the most when you use Kanadi on your team. Also a 3 hit AoE, shield shake too, and also a 5 move that can go up to 5 hit if you boost it all the way to the max. Combine that with her passive, Kanadi can maximum inflict 9 hit of shield shaving in one move. Both of Kanadi passives working off uh, the mechanic called Kanadi clone. I know it's called something else in English, but I like to call the clone better. So how the clone work is um, it can dodge an attack, um, a physical attack or a magic attack, and you can have up to 9 of it, but you can also use it as a follow attack for one of the passive. But due to how strong it would be if there was no uh, cap to it, the passive has a cap of 4 follow up attack. So for Kanadi, you want to have at least 4 Kanadi clone um, on her all the time, which the first passive already given, so as long as you don't get hit, then everything will be fine. But Kanadi has a few moves to get the clone back, so it's all okay. And I would say that without the cap, I think the cap is needed because well, maybe is it needed? Because without the calf uh, on the clone attack, 9 hit follow attack with Kanadi would be extremely overpowerful. So I think it's, it makes sense why there's a cap there. If there was no cap, then Ian and Kanadi can eventually deal 14 hit of shield breaking in one turn to any target. So, um, well, she's not that overly powerful, so Kanadi is, is strong, but not that overpowerfully strong. And Kanadi ultimate also got buff. And the buff is very strong because in addition to the 6 hit shield breaking, it's also attaching a Terminal's ultimate on it. And um, it's, it's strong but there are a few weaknesses to it. You can compare this to Solon ultimate and some might even look at it and think it's better than Solon ult. But um, that's not the case all the time and I think it's better to explain this with a visual than just explaining it by word. So. Uh, please don't mind my uh, horrible drawing, it's very hard to draw with a mouse on MS Paint, so very sorry for the bad drawing. But um, this is Solon and Kennedy and how they work when three characters attack um, at once in one turn. So these are the potency um, for three character. and for Solon case, if Solon is only boosting one, then the total potency for these three characters, assuming that each one of them has around 500 potency for the attack, will be around 2000 total. And for Kanadi, it would be 2,250 together total. And it's to be expected because Kanadi is boosting by 150% combining all three characters. And Solon is, um, is just boosting 100%. But even so, there are cases where despite that Kanadi percentage boosts higher and she affected, affected more character, um, there are cases where where Kanade will be worse than Solon. So in this case where the attacker has varying potency, uh, for Solon team who will be the one that boosting the strongest uh, potency, so in this case it's 1000. So for Solon it will be a total of 3000 potency on the team. While Kanade is boosting 50% for everyone, so in Kanade case it will still total up to 3000. Despite the fact that it might look like Kanadi is more effective because it's like a total of 150% compared to Solon 100%, um, Kanadi is boosting, like amplifying the smaller potency also, while Solon is amplifying the higher potency. So, um, I don't know how do I word this? Um, the higher. The highest potency of the strongest attacker on your team, the higher they are, the more effective Solon is, and the less effective Kanadi is. I word that correctly? I think I word that correctly. Yosh. And also level 10 isn't that mandatory. 
If you have an extra stone for Kanadi, then it's fine to level 10 it, but it's not worth chasing for. Kanadi isn't a really strong DPS. Like her brother Falco, they will have an assassinate move, which is really strong when an enemy is in break. And for Kanadi case, it can be even stronger since the passive has some follow up attack with it. Except that even though it's like 160 extra potency for the attack compared to just Falco, Falco passive has damage up uh, to support him, while Kanadi, um, she has lower base attack than Falco and doesn't really have any damage up passive, so her damage isn't really that good either. Um, for Ian, because this is a new Kanadi, I do not actually know how uh, she will perform uh, in the end. But if I were to estimate, I would say she is good, but not like a must need good. She's already started the battle with 4 clones, so it's already a 7 hit shield shaving along with some debuff. And also ultimate buffing to everyone um, when she's breaking the enemy. The unbuffed Kanadi in JP though, um, when she was released, I think she's like a little bit of play, but um, with power creep as time go on, we have a lot more characters who can do consistent uh, 8 hit single target now. So Kanadi isn't really needed anymore for shield shaving because we have much more characters that is much better at doing that. For comparison, uh, Kanadi is kind of like Sonya. Both are dagger support and both are also good at shield shaving um, enemy. Now before the buff, Kanadi would not be as good um, compared to Sonya because it's kind of hard to compete with a 6 hit AoE shield shave. But with a new buff to Kanadi, she's excel as much as Sonya is. Ultimate giving potency buff, gaming, gaining clone every time she's attacked, and also having now having an AoE uh, shield shaving attack. Also inflict more debuff than Sonya can do for attack, defense, and also the dagger resistance. I would say the only thing Sonya does better is um, AoE multi-hit and maybe damage. But other than that, these two characters are around the equal level. So in conclusion, um, Kanadi um, importantness and usefulness is around Sonya level, which is it's not someone worth getting because Sonya was was paired with Bajalo, so it's kind of worth it to get Bajalo. But Kanadi is all alone on the sacred blaze ban on top of that. So I do not think that Kanadi is worth it to get it alone just by pulling on the sacred blaze banner. If she has like a passive that attached like a 15% defense down and break attached on one of the passive, I would say that would make her much stronger and on Solon level. But as of the current state, she's great but not that must have.